Hey guys, it's me, the Dumb Fanatic, and welcome to a video. At, like at all, actually, that's that's quite impressive. Um, no, today I'm bringing you a draft analysis for like the millionth league I'm in, and like the millionth league that uh, my good friend Jack, aka Gravy, has commissioned. I think this is his third one actually now. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, he has commissioned a new Wi-Fi league. Kind of was like a, a last hurrah before Sword and Shield become a thing, so it's going to be quite cool. And as you can see down below, we have got 16 teams, so it's going to be a big draft um, and uh, quite a big season, which probably take us, you know, not quite to the release of Sword and Shield, but near enough. So I expect this will probably be the full last Wi-Fi league I'm involved in. I do plan on doing another showdown league, uh, another season before Sword and Shield come out. So that should be good, hopefully we get on okay in that too, but drafting hasn't even begun, so I can't even allude to that yet. Back to this, the UPBA, I actually honestly couldn't tell you what that stands for, something like the United Pokemon Battle Association is my guess, that's really bad considering um, I was one of the first people to join the, the, the Discord server for a start and get the spreadsheet, so yeah, it looks bad on me, but um, yeah, anyway, let's get into the draft, so the rules of the draft were... You had to have between 10 and 11 Pokemon, no less than that, and we had a budget of 120 points. Um, Jack was trying to be more generous with the points and the the, the uh, pricing of the Pokemon to draft, mainly because we kind of wanted to have a bit of fun, you know, before this metagame dies out. So some things might appear to be a bit cheaper than you may normally expect to see in a uh, draft league maybe a, a year ago. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else really that important to say, other than, you know, you don't need a mega. There's nothing too broken. I, well, I no. I, we'll, we'll see how it goes, because I've never done a league with um, Tapu Lele, but Tapu Lele is unbanned, as is Age of Slash. Otherwise, it's pretty much your normal bans and unbans. There's nothing stupid broken in here. No Ubers. Um, I was doing an Ubers League with Jack, but that kind of died quite quickly because it wasn't too serious. Um, I think you're allowed up to four Z-Move users. There's a separate Z budget of 25 um, points, so the Pokemon's pricing to draft is also the same to put the Z-Crystal on. So you essentially have to, uh, you know, allot your Z crystals to Pokemon as per their pricing. Um, I'll tell you mine as I go along. Um, that's if I can actually remember which ones are my Z move users. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's really much I need to explain in terms of the, the draft. It's a pretty normal snake draft style lead. Um, in this instance, and as you can see at the bottom, actually, we've got the 16 teams there. Couldn't go through them all and tell you who the coaches are because I honestly couldn't remember. Um, but as you can see, we're pretty much slap bang in the middle with 8th pick. So, I was kind of guaranteed something good in the first pick. I mean, you've been staring at my first pick for the last few minutes anyway. Um, so, there was always a good chance that something good was going to be around for me. Um, obviously, if Tapakoko was there, I'd have taken that, but I think that was literally the first pick of the whole uh, draft. So, I decided I was going to uh, take uh, Megalopony. Um, now, I've used this before in a team I picked up in an Auras League years ago, and I think I had it in Sun and Moon when I did the D League for the GBA. So, I haven't actually used it for a long old time. And I think I've become a better battler since I last had it, so I think I understand how to use it a bit better now. So, Megalopony is Megalopony. I think if you're watching this video, you, you probably know Draft League at this point, and you understand how much of a threat Megalopony is. Its stats don't really suggest that it should be able to do as much damage as it can do, um, but its move pool is great, its ability scrappy pretty much means it has no switch-ins. Other than bulky psychics, and that is obviously an issue for this thing that I have addressed in the draft later on. Um, so yeah, the only real thing that can stop it is bulky psychics, but even then, if I have chip on the psychic type Pokemon, I can just click return, and that's going to do a whole lot of damage. Um, it's pretty much, uh, to me, I view it as a late game sweeper. Um, it, it doesn't even need the setup because it has the, the power and the speed out of the bat, and it, it actually has really good bulk as well. I mean, I don't have any of the Pokemon stats up in front of me because I don't want to make this video last too long. Um, 
but it's got like something like 96 defenses um, and like 70 something HP, which isn't horrific. Like you, you could run bulky if you want. And I've said this thing's got lots of offensive moves because it's a normal or good offensive moves. Um, because it's a normal type, obviously its move pool is just ridiculously diverse in every aspect. So not that I'm going to be, but it's got lots of different special type moves. It's got loads of support moves. It's got cosmic power. It's got baton pass. Although I don't know what the rules are off my head for that. Um, I think it gets healing wish as well, maybe. Um, there are definitely some more meme type moves that I could bring. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to use this thing. Um, it, it's just a nice Pokemon to have a first pick as a first pick because there's lots of ways you can go to the team. It only requires a few things on your team to help support it. Otherwise, it's quite good at just being quite self sufficient, this thing. Um, but definitely a late game cleaner, so something to keep in mind is something to take out bulky psychic, type, psychic types and something to be able to actually, you know, power through a lot of uh, bulky mons on my opponent's team. So, that's Megalopony. Um, I don't actually think I have the nicknames. I have a lot of nicknames to all these Pokemon, but I can't remember them off the top of my head, so I can't I can't tell them to you. But that's Megalopony. So, as you can see, as I was 8, I have quite a weight to come back to me. Um, I was fairly confident that I wouldn't get sniped at my next pick, um, although there was potential for it to go, because if someone wanted to draft a sand core, then it's something they should have taken quite soon, because it is, of course, Tyranitar that I'm talking about. Um, Tyranitar is a Pokemon I've wanted to use for a very, very long time um, in drafting format. I've never used it before. Um, I wanted to potentially get Hydreigon, but I don't know if it was gone at that point. Hydreigon was the only other Dark type that I really wanted to consider, it was between these two. Obviously having Tyranitar does mean I can consider something like Excadrill later on if needed. Um, but this thing, it gives me Stealth Rocks, and it gives me an incredibly powerful Dark type attacker, so it kind of makes Psychic types almost irrelevant. Um, obviously the first two, with the first two bits I've got here, I do have uh, a glaring fighting type weakness, but that does obviously get fixed soon. Um, like th this thing again, powerful attacking mon. It can be physical or special. It has the chance to set up. I think its role is more likely to be bulky offense. I think in, in the overall grand scheme of things, once you've seen the team, um, it's obviously sand increases its special defense, and it's just got a naturally great physical defense anyway. So this thing's really bulky. Obviously you can run Tropple to pretty much negate its fighting weakness at this point, and it takes a hit, it's guaranteed to get rocks up, it's guaranteed to get a powerful move off, and yes, bulky psychic types are going to be running Hidden Power Fighting, or Focus Blast, or Drain Punch, or something like that, but a Tarantar can deal with that with a powerful crunch afterwards. Um, so yeah, um, it's a mon I'm, looking, I'm really looking forward to trying out, because I really haven't. It doesn't really fit my sort of, I want to say, playstyle because I think when I like a bulky one, I like it to be able to be self-sufficient, I like it to be able to recover itself up, I like it not to have too many glaring four times weaknesses or, you know, common weaknesses. Um, but I think Tyranitar suits Megalopony too well. Um, the, the main thing which I haven't mentioned is obviously the Pursuit Trap and the potential of this thing is incredible because if I can Pursuit Trap a Psychic type and either kill it or weaken it to the point where Megalopony can just kill it with a turn, then we're in, we're in a great position because that's all Lopini needs to be gone. Obviously Steel types and Rock types which resist <laughs> the normal type moves I can't resist fighting and obviously with access to High Jump Kick this is Mega Lopini by the way, could you imagine Tyranitar doing a High Jump Kick? That would be some image. Um, obviously with those sort of powerful moves Mega Lopini is then able to clean. So Tyranitar, I think people have probably made this like duo before it's probably because it works so well. In, in my head it should work um, and I'm really excited to, to actually using it this season. Um, so yeah, that's Titar, that was my second round pick, and again, as you can tell by the draft order at the bottom, I had to wait a bit until it came back to me again. But, um, like, not many bulky psychics had gone at this point, and I decided, you know what, I need bulky psychic type, because obviously with Tyranitar I have a ghost and dark resist, and if I had a psychic type, um, I would then have a fighting resist, which is kind of what I need at this moment in time. Um, so I am actually going to pick up Reuniclus. Um, <clears throat> Reuniclus is a Pokemon which I think I've had in a draft before, in, in drafts before. I've never used it. Um, 
And that's on me because I've seen this thing used by many people in leagues and it is like one of the few Pokemon that can legit just 6-0 a team from a start. Like, it's got Calm Mind, it's got Trick Room, it's got Acid Armor, it's got Recovery, it's got a great move pool, it's got a, two fantastic abilities. Magic Guard, which prevents Elpsy from being toxic, um, or you know, taking damage from entry hazards. It's got Regenerator, um, which I do actually kind of get a Regenerator call later on, as you'll see, so um, I can always consider that as an ability. Overcoat is like, I don't know actually know why they gave it Overcoat because it's got Magic Guard, like, Overcoat is redundant at that point. Um, but yeah, it's a bulky sidekick on, on both physical and, you know, especially defensive side, mainly because of its HP actually. Um, its HP stat is ridiculous, um, but it's got a great move pool, um, it's got lots of support moves, it can be self-sustaining, it's, it's an easy switch in for um, fighting types, uh, you know, other than knockoff, but even then with Colbo, that's, that's not going to be doing anything, and after that, they, they can't really touch it. And you know, like I said, with Uniclus and Tyranitar synergize incredibly well. Um, the only sort of thing that I guess can really do decent damage to both is ground types, um, water types, and grass types. So I, I fixed that in my draft later on. But yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about my like the, the three things I have so far because I think it's all pretty self-explanatory what they can do. But I think at the moment my speed tiers are you know they're a bit all over the place. But obviously it does get addressed. But having something like Reunclus also does keep people away from using Trick Room on Megalopony. Uh, bringing Trick Room to counter my Megalopony. Um, and also, if, you know, if they're bringing Thunder Wave, uh, then I can also potentially utilize Trick Room in, in some other way like that. Um, so yeah, this thing's probably going to be hyper bulky offense, but I really want to just try and, you know, set up with this thing in a game at some point this season and just try and sweep through someone's team because it's... It's just a fantastic one. It's just down to whether I can actually, you know, execute the plan properly. So yeah, that's uh, the team so far. Make a lot of new time to have Um Next pick, um, I figured I'd better get some hazard removal at some point. I can hear my... Okay, no, never mind. I can hear, like, a pinging noise. I think it's coming from my headset or my computer, but I can't tell what the sounds are. Anyway, yeah, um... I haven't got any hazard removal at this point, and like I said, I, I don't really have a decent ground type resist at this moment in time, so bulky grass type, but also I'm quite slow at this moment in time. So there was one mon that kind of stood out to me, and I have drafted this before in two leagues, and both those leagues have died before I've even had the chance to bring this thing, so I'm hoping I can do something with this season, and that is Superior. I am so excited for Superior. So, Superior fits this team for many reasons. Yes, it's Defog. I don't want to primarily bring it as Defog, because that just seems like a waste of it. But, you know, its move pool is pretty sparse as it is, so you can normally just chuck Defog on there. Um, it's fast, so it's fast Taunter, um, which is always useful to prevent setup. Um, it is uh, obviously contrary Leaf Storm. Um, it gives it the ability to, to break through teams again, which works really well for Megalophony. Um, and it's a ground resist, which is nice, because this thing is naturally quite bulky. It's bulky speed, which is lovely. I, I, to me, it just it just sounds so good. Um, and with the Leaf Storm set up, you know, it it can just, again, it's self-sufficient in what it can do. It's got Leech Seed, Spam, it can Synthesis. Yes, its move forward isn't great. Um, it doesn't even need Contrary. Obviously, you can run Sword Stance. You can run... Uh, Glads and another great utility move it has. It's, it's just a great utility mod, and when obviously you, you see it most of the time, you expect Leaf Storm, and then it's really hard to check. Um, not much more I can say. It's just a nice fit for my team at this moment in time because it, it, it just gives me lots of what I was missing at this moment in time, especially with my next pick coming up. Because at the moment, I only have Tyranitar for rocks, and I only have Superior for removal. Um, and I was quite stuck at this point what to pick next. Um, so thank you to Jack, because I believe he was the one who told me to go for it now, because, well, it, it, it fits my team too well. You guys can probably already guess what the next pick is. Uh, it is, in fact, Excadrill. So, round five Excadrill. I'm actually quite surprised it lasted this long. No one else had Hippowdon or Mega Tyranitar that I remember, uh, at least at this point. So, 
no one was probably looking at it in terms of the sand core, but you know, it, it's still a very good ground and steel type. Both types that are hit lots of the mega game really hard, um, especially with fairies being everywhere. And this thing just provides so many roles for me. We've got physical offense, um, which at the moment we have Tyranitar, which is obviously really strong but fairly slow, and Mega Lock, which can hit hard, but you know, 135 attack. Is, is, is all right. Um, but extra drill, obviously access to sword stance, really powerful stab and iron head and earthquake get great coverage like rock slide, um, poison jab, X scissor. Um, I think they're probably the main ones that you'll ever need to be honest. Rapid spin obviously is great utility to get remo uh, for removal. So I now actually have um, defog and superior and rapid spin on. Extra drill. Now I like to have a mixture of both because that way I can then plan on bringing rapid spin rather than defog if I want to set up lots of hazards, which I can do later on as you'll see. Um, but yeah, as you can see, my team kind of struggles with fairies at the moment, so extra drill is a really good bring for me to you know consider. If someone has a really scary fairy on their team, I'll just put extra drill on there and they're going to struggle because um, they know that their fairy is going to be one of their best answers to my megalopony. Um, so it's going to cause lots of issues and obviously I think the main thing we can see here is that I do have the sand rush um, option available with sandstorm. So again, a potential late game sweeper, a potential wall breaker with mold breaker, another fantastic ability. Um, this thing just, yeah, I, I know I've said it about everything so far but at the moment um, all the Pokemon fit my team pretty well. Um, so as you can see actually, I haven't mentioned this so far. On top right I have a budget counter and I have 45 left so I've only got five things I have to get at least five more and I've spent nearly two-thirds of my budget so um, these are kind of like my I guess my premium picks I'm really happy with those picks considering my position in the draft um, but now we're gonna have to delve into sort of like the mid to lower tiers of uh, picks so so far I know I've tried to address the issue with of ground type sort of struggle um, with superior so I kind of figured I probably need something else that can help me deal with ground type and um, <laughs> you can never go wrong with a third form of hazard removal and uh, I've gone for Rotom Heat or Rotom Heat as it shall now be known uh, this season um, I said I was going to make <laughs> I was going to get more premium picks but I guess 12 points is still quite expensive um, yeah I need a fire type still um, it's a ground immunity, it's an electric, oh sorry, it's like a, a thunder wave immunity, so that, that's nice. Um, it's just a nice really bulky mom, it's got defog, it's got will-o-wisp, it's got toxic, it's got thunder wave, it's got all the support moves that I could want. Um, Volt switch, obviously the only thing about it being, you know, this being my fire type is it only has access to overheat, which can, you know, opponents can use their advantage, but I don't feel that with the team I draft that fire is too important with um, grass types sort of being addressed a bit later on. Um, what else is there? Steel types, obviously I have Excadrill, Megalopony, I think that's enough to scare any steel combo. Um, yeah, this thing's just like a nice fit for my team. As you can see, it's, it's a pretty fat team so far. Um, it's like a nice speed tier, nice bolt, nice special offense if needed. It just kind of fit my team well. Um, and now I don't have to focus on getting hazard removal. My team isn't even weak to hazards. Um, I like to be able to control the hazards put in front of me. And so with set, broken heat, and extra drill as hazard option, you know, hazard removal options, I think I've given that department now. So yeah, broken heat was my uh, sixth round pick. Next up, I, I swear I always end up drafting this thing. So I, I kind of had an oversight in the fact that I hadn't drafted a fairy or a dragon at this point and all the good ones were going fast so I decided you know what we're going to go for my boy Neuvern again, um, it's like the fourth league I've had it in at this point, but I just love it, it it's a, I think it's underrated with Z moves and with its move pool, I think it's something that's slept on, um, obviously it's speed is incredible, um, yes it's offensive stats aren't the best for a dragon type, but the moves it gets like it's stab moves, it gets Hurricane and Draco Meteor, like that kind of makes up for its, you know, average attack stats. 
um, it gets U-turn, which is great for momentum, which I haven't mentioned yet actually, I only have Rotom Heat and Noiburn for as a Volt turn, so that's kind of nice to have at last. Um, it gets great coverage, it gets Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, it gets Boom Burst, which is great to spam. Um, there's probably more moves I'm forgetting. Um, it gets sort of really cool setup moves, it gets Tailwind, um, I think it gets Home Claws, I think it gets Work Up maybe. Um, and it's actually a great Z move. Oh, I forgot to mention, I think Excadrill is my Z mon, uh, my first Z mon that I, I picked. Nothing else in my draft really needed a Z Crystal at this point, so I thought if I have a Z, uh, Z Crystal on that thing in the sand, that would be quite fun. So Excadrill Z, Z mon, as is Noivern. So I just, I feel like Noivern is probably going to be the thing I put Z Crystal on most. Um, mainly because Z Hurricane is, is nice and spammable. Um, or, you know, Z Draco is also quite nice and spammable if they don't have a Fairy or a Steel type. Um, as it gets fire coverage, well, it just gets great coverage. And actually, what people don't realize is how this thing is actually quite bulky. Obviously, Dragon type is great defensive typing. Um, it's got like 90 in both defenses and like 80 something HP, which is pretty good for Bolt. It's a, it's another fighting resist as well, which works really well for Lopany and Tyranitar and Excadrill at this point. So I've got three things weak to fighting out of the seven. So yeah, it's a nice check. Um, it's also another ground immunity. And the fact it's quite weak to ice is kind of covered with Megalop being able to scare lots of ice types about, uh, out. And I have Rotom Heat as well, which works quite nicely. Um, so yeah, that's my seventh round pick, Noivern. Once again, Noivern is on my team, but I, I do love this thing. I love its design. I love its concept, I love I love using it, I think it suits my playstyle really well. Um, so that's my Noivern. Next up round 8, um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't have a bulky water type at this point, and there weren't many left, but as I mentioned earlier, Reuniclus does get Regenerator, so I focused on getting a Regenerator core off <laughs> Reuniclus, because Tangrowth was unfortunately gone, that was going to be one of my picks at some point. I also considered Amoongus too, but I wanted to try something that I haven't used before. So we have gone for the Alamomola, um, Mega Love Disc here. Um, I know it can be considered passive at times, um, but I think I've got enough things on my team where I can synergize with this thing if I am feeling going to be a bit passive, and I don't because I don't want people to set up an Alamomola. But its bulk is great. It's got Regenerator, which is great. It's Scald. It can spam that. It's got. Um, I think this has got Healing Wish as well, actually. It's one. Of, it's got to be one of the best Wish passes in the game, purely because of its HP stat. Um, lots of my like bulky Tyranitar can really utilize Wish quite well. Um, I'm just looking at the rest of my team. Lots of it has sort of moves that can heal itself, but again, Rotom Heat has Pain Split, yes. But Wish will be really nice for it. I think it just fits my team. I, I'm not saying this about everything, but it fits my team quite well. And with the regenerator core potentially of this and Reuniclus, that's going to be quite hard to break down purely because of all the HP and defense these, both these things have. Um, so I, I, I've never used it. I don't, I don't, the only thing is, I don't know if it would suit my style of play. Um, but we'll see. I think this is something that will probably be coming to a lot of games because I feel like it's quite a nice Pokemon you can just like chuck in there, like, oh, okay. I, I struggle with some physical Pokemon, let's just put Alamomola in there, like, oh, okay, I struggle with some special Pokemon, okay, let's just chuck Alamomola in there. I feel like it's, it's, to me, I'm probably talking a load of nonsense, but to me it just feels like that sort of thing that I can just rely on if I need bulk. Um, and while it doesn't hit hard, it has a chance to burn things at Scald, um, which is always nice. It's a toxic, there's probably lots of other moves that I'm forgetting um, that it does get, which are useful, but... Yeah, it, it's here for bulk. That is what Alamomola does. Um, so next up, there's only three rounds left after this pick, and I still don't have a fairy. Um, now, I don't think there were any fairies like left at this point. Or I didn't think there were. So I was, I was a bit like, oh, crap. I was going to take Florges again. So again, Florges is another Pokemon I tend to rely on. Um, I was like, you know what? I don't need has removal at this point. Um, I can always do with more fighting checks. <laughs> um, so my next Pokemon is Gardevoir. Now, I don't like to double up on typings, or I, I try not to, but I think that's something I really need to let go of because 
I was thinking to myself at the time of draft, and I was like, well, if I knew I was going to get Gardevoir, I wouldn't have got Reuniclus. But I think Gardevoir and Reuniclus kind of play different roles. Kind of. So, the upsetting thing about this is it's a psychic. Because it's a fairy, it doesn't. Uh, it's a psychic type, sorry. As well as a fairy, it's neutral to dark. It doesn't resist dark. Um, and I would always like my fairy to be my knockoff switching because I do actually struggle with knockoff. Um, obviously, I have Tyranitar, yes, but fighting coverage because it's quad weak. Megalopony is probably my best one, but as a late game sweeper, you probably don't want to be switching that in on things that could potentially kill you. So, um, God of War is my fairy. I, I need a fairy, I need, I need a dragon resist because at the moment my only dragon resist is Excadrill. <laughs> Which, yeah, isn't great. Um, so I kind of need to patch those holes up with some of my last picks. So Gardevoir was there, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take it. It's a Pokemon I've never used before. It's a Pokemon I love. I love the Rolls line. I do prefer Gallade to Gardevoir, and I do prefer Mega Gallade to Mega Gardevoir. Um, but, you know, it's it's so strong. I've realised I've gone out of focus. Okay, thank you, webcam. Um, it's so strong, it's got Stab Psychic, obviously, Stab Psyshock, Stab Moonblast, it's got Coverage, Thunderbolt, Energy Ball, it's Utility. I think this is like my third Mon with Healing Wish. Um, Heal Bell, it's another Wish user if I don't bring out a Mamola. It's got Trace, so I can copy people's abilities and cause shenanigans like that. Synchronize is great if they want to try and paralyze or toxic or burn my Lopony or uh, Extra Drill, something like that. Um, it's just a cool Mon. Like, it also makes my speed tiers quite nice. I know I've mentioned my speed tiers recently, actually. But obviously we've got Lopony at like 137 or 136, I think it is. Sep's 113. And Neuburn is 122, 123, something like that. So Gardevoir gives me a nice 80 speed um, speed tier. I don't have anything around the 100 at this point, which is something I try to address a bit later on. So that's the only thing that kind of annoyed me is, you know, it's not as fast as I probably need in my draft right now, but it's it's the best fairy left. And actually, it fits my team quite nicely. It's another, um, it's a quad resist fighting, which is quite nice. So it partners up again with Tyranitar, quite nice. Um, and Megalopony too. Um, yeah, don't have much else to say about Gardevoir. So the penultimate pick is a Pokemon that I actually have. Uh, I, I mentioned the Ubers League I was doing with Jack and some other friends that kind of fell apart. This is the Pokemon I drafted that, that I'm going to come on to next. So I only have two Stealth Rockers in Tyranitar and Excadrill. Excadrill, I would rather not run Stealth Rocks on because, you know, having the coverage means it can do its role a bit better, which leaves Tyranitar as my Stealth Rock user, which is a bit of an issue. So um, I decided to go for. <laughs> I decided to go for Shuckle as, uh, as, as one of my last few picks. As you can see before I, I changed this slide, I only had six points left. And yes, I could have splashed all six on one more Mon rather than thinning out the roster, but I think Shuckle was the best option I had for Stealth Rocks. Also because it does give me Sticky Web, and I was just talking about my speed tiers because I have three things that are like really quick and then I have nothing like until Excadrill. I want to say, or Rotom Heat maybe, Rotom Heat's like 91, and Extra is like 88, something like that. So I don't have anything between <laughs> Superior and between Rotom Heat yet. Um, so Sticky Web is going to be nice. It also negates um, any choice scarves my opponents might bring to check Megalopony, um, which is really nice because that means Megalopony can outspeed and has a good chance to kill. So um, yeah, this thing is kind of just like a tank. You, you know what Shackle does because of its stats. It has no, basically no attack, it has no special attack, it has no speed, and its defenses are just absolutely ridiculous. If I bring it, it's probably going to be to Toxic something, it's probably going to be for Stealth Rocks, it's probably going to be for Sticky Web. Um, it is setup fodder, <laughs> so I have to be careful for that. If someone sets a substitute up against this thing, it ain't going to look good, is it? Um, so I have to be careful with Shackle in that sense. Um, it's kind of there. I, th I think it's a mon that can do more damage by sitting on the bench than not coming most of the time. Because people will prepare for sticky webs if you don't bring it, and then you know that's, that's a that's a that's a defog on a mon that they've wasted that they didn't need to bring. Or you know it's a, it's a white herb to you know negate the speed drop. Um, it's something they have to prepare for. But how many times I'll bring it? I don't know. Um, but it's also a rock type, which means that special defense if partnered with Tyranitar is actually going to be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> because 
obviously Sandstorm increases uh, special defense of rock types by uh, 50%, I think it is. Yeah, it's, plus, it's like plus one, basically. So, uh, yeah, and because it's a bug type, it's actually neutral to fighting. So I've not, I've, and, uh, sorry, ground. So it actually covers like a lot of my team weaknesses quite well. Uh, that's Shuckle. I, I can't really tell you what else there is to do with Shuckle because Shuckle can't do much more than sit there and just throw hazards out and beat that. Um, so the final pick, and I have to say, I, I haven't mentioned Snipes at all in this video, but this next pick of mine, I, out of everything I've picked, was a Snipe. I think Serp might have been a Snipe um, and Megalop, but Megalop was round one, and Serp, yeah, okay, that's the major Snipe there, I'd say. But <laughs> I managed to Snipe Haunter. Um, <laughs> I can't remember who it was from, but I managed to Snipe it. Um, and it's actually quite nice, because I don't have a Ghost type, I don't have a Poison type. I was looking at my team and I was like, okay, so other than Excadrill and uh, Iron Tail Lopany, I might struggle a bit against fairies. Um, sort of super effectively, I could chip them down with my team, I think I've got the, the potential to do that. But Haunter, um, obviously while it's not Gengar, sadly, Gengar would have been nice but I couldn't afford it. Um, it has like base 105 or 150 in special attack. Um, and 95 speed, and unlike Gengar, it actually, I believe, does have Levitate. So the ground immunity. Um, it, it, sadly, it can't absorb toxic spikes because it does Levitate. Um, but again, this this thing could be like a, a silent threat. People won't expect me to bring it because it's worth two points and it's a haunter. It, it's frail as hell. It'll it'll die to any one move. But if I can bring this thing in safely and, you know, you don't have a ghost resist, it's going to do a lot of damage to many things, or, you know, sludge bomb for fairies, You're like, again, it gets coverage, like, giga drain, energy ball, thunderbolt, icy wind, um, it's also a Z user, so it's going to be a really powerful, uh, sort of, it's going to throw off, like, powerful ghost in Zs, and whatever it's called, never ending nightmare, that's the one, or, um, acid, is it acid downpour? I think that's what it's called, um, I think this is something that I, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to bring to a game, whether serious or not, um, because I think it's something that is sort of out of the lower pool, it's something I haven't seen used before and it, it could potentially do work. Yeah, I could also bring like meme-ish sets like Curse or Destiny Bond, it's another Will-O-Wisp user, so I think I have like, what, I have Gardevoir for Will-O-Wisp, Haunt for Will-O-Wisp, <laughs> um, Rotom for Will-O-Wisp, yeah, that's three Will-O-Wisp users, that's nice, physical guys aren't really enjoying themselves. Um, yeah, it was like one of the best things I could have picked for two points at that point. So yeah, that's the team. I appreciate that I've talked for half an hour, so I won't leave you here for much longer. Um, let me know what you guys think. Sorry if I haven't gone in depth enough, but if I did go into depth about abilities, moves, stats, everything like that, we could have been here for well over an hour. And you guys don't want that, and my voice doesn't want that, and I don't want to hear myself talk for that long, as much as you guys don't want to hear me talk that long anyway. Um, so make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, to keep up to date with the, um, the battles. Um, my week one battle, I've actually already had, so I won't have any spoilers, will go up next weekend, and I need to actually prep for week two. I actually think I'm playing Jack Gravy, the commissioner, in week two. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, guys, if you did enjoy, leave a like. Make sure you check out all the links below to all the other channels. Um, I think, is there a fan Discord? I don't know if there is. If there is, there'll be a link. Um, and if, yeah, any other sort of important links like Twitter and whatnot will be there too. So thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.